I was looking for one, but I just see this older gentleman sitting outside. So I stop and talk to him and uh, things, and I said, well, I don't think about leaving the park and starting this business, I said. He goes, do you have a telescope? And I said, no. He goes, well, I have one I'll sell to you for like a dollar, you know? And I didn't care what it was, it was better than what I had. If you've ever been to a state park, you see people that do, like they call them the campfire programs, talking about bears and stuff. I said, man, I could do that. I could wildflower walk or kayaking on the lake. But they go, uh, no, we need somebody to do these programs at Cherry Springs. And they go, what constellations do you know? And I was like, Big Dipper. And I thought Orion's Belt was a constellation. So I said that. And uh, anyway, I just found it interesting. And I always like to tell that story during a program because I said, if I can do it, anybody can. You know, there's no big mm, secret. Yeah. But, uh, do you think that the creation theory is as credible as the Big Bang Theory? Probably lean more towards the Big Bang Theory. However, as you've heard me say multiple times in your childhood, is it's really hard to understand where something comes from nothing. And I think that's kind of a problem with us as humans, is that we don't really know how to define that type of thing. So you come up with either a Big Bang or God created something. Looking through a telescope for the first time, like you know, it was kind of a learning curve. And I remember uh, those guys I was just telling you about where they said, hey, do you want to see something? And I go, it's a Whirlpool Galaxy. And I looked through the telescope. Well, I'm expecting that Hubble picture, you know? And I don't see it, I go, they go, maybe bump the scope, and I go, no, it's in the center, and I looked again, and by the third time, I didn't want to look foolish, I still hadn't seen it, but I, I go, yeah, thanks for showing that to me, you know? <laughs> like I tell, I usually during the tour, I might, I'll say to people, like, you know, is anybody like, uh, we're here on the East Coast, driven to California, or, mm -hmm. you know, because I said, not flown, but drove, because I said, you have a sense of what then, like, 3,000 miles are. Mm -hmm. But I said, when you toss out a number, like just to the sun, 93 million miles, like how did you lose all comprehend that, yeah, yeah. that distance? Mm -hmm. You familiar with like Beetlejuice and Orion yeah. and yeah. Antares mm -hmm. and uh, Scorpius, I always point those out. And I said, you know, like if those were in the place of her sun, they would basically swallow up like Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and be in the yeah. orbit of Jupiter. That's how massive that star is. Usually during a tour, I'll say that's my favorite. And then after about like, I say that eight times, I realize, uh, I don't know, there's certain constellations that uh, when you see them, it might bring like a memory, like the first time I, thought, I saw like the star uh, Capella and Orion. And that, that reminds me of like falls coming or I see like those beautiful nebula in the summertime, like around Sagittarius and stuff. And those I really enjoy seeing. I tell people sometimes, uh, if you're familiar like the Swan and the Lagoon Nebula, are those? Oh yeah, I've heard of them, yeah. And uh, I don't know, when I see them, it's like, you know, summer's here, and I always joke, it's almost like seeing an old friend, you know, yeah. that appears in July, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that would be a little uh, uh, selfish <laughs> to, say, oh, to think that, yeah, I mean, especially given the size of our universe. All the different amazing species that are on our planet. Yeah. So would you think that you're the only one that has a brain on this planet? I mean, you no, know, there's a lot of smart species that are out here and continue to thrive. And, you know, it was like, because I get a lot of people that come from New York City, uh, you know, urban areas have never been out, right? And so sometimes when I say, well, I'm thinking like, it's not a good night or something or I've, I've caught myself saying that, and then I realized, but to them it is, you know, seeing more than a handful of stars. But I always tell, uh, try to, I guess the analogy would be, 
you know, could you miss walking through a forest if you never experienced that? You know, like the smell after like a rainstorm or the f under your feet or just all the different shades of green if you'd never had to walk through a forest. And it's the same way I, I kind of say like, you know, you don't know what you're missing that all the awe and wonder that goes with looking at a star-filled sky if you, you never had that chance to experience it, which is pretty sad because so many people today have never you know, had that opportunity. There's enough, like, areas in the world that, you know, you should be able to do astronomy and, mm -hmm. and not have to, you know, worry about that. But it'd be nice not to, but I think that, um, you know, you need light, you know, to live and be safe in whatever you want. Lights on your streets, right? Lights on your highways and all that. Mm -hmm. You gotta take care of yourself first before uh, and be you know, safe in that aspect, and you know, so no, I think I think it's okay to be able to travel outside of the city or something like that to be able to you know, be able to observe. Yeah, they like that point. And like our future. Gosh, we almost seem to be regressing more as time goes on. Uh, I don't know. It just. Uh, you know, are you you're familiar with Carl Sagan? Yeah. Oh, you yeah, know, really like the pale blue dot. And mm -hmm. Did you read that one? Yeah. Okay. And, and like he said, like uh, there's no planet planet B that we can just move to or something. Oh, yeah. He said, you know, like visit maybe, but like to settle, he said not yet, and not for a very very long time. You know, he, he was like, we need to take care of this one. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think that will colonize planets in our lifetime, most specifically the moon and, that's just not a planet, but we'll colonize the moon and Mars um, to clean up our own planet first, but I mean, I think that it's hard as a species, we tend to create a lot of destruction, a lot of waste, and a lot of, you know, like you're saying, junk, and we don't know how to necessarily remove it, right now I don't think we're responsible at all.